In episode six, I want to talk about light and wave particle duality, my understanding of things, and why I don't feel comfortable with the topic. So even though I've been teaching chemistry for a long time, this is something that I do not fully understand. So let's start with a little experiment. So I have a little kit that I bought from Flint Scientific, and it's got all these different color pieces of filters. So I've got a purple, a blue, a green, a yellow, an orange, and a red. And then underneath is a glow in the dark strip, like that. So the different colors will kind of shine on the different spots there. It's kind of like that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on here so we have a light source. And I'm going to go ahead and set that down so that it soaks up all of the different colors of light, red through violet. When I shut that down, what we find is, is that the blue and the purple activate the glow in the dark strip while the rest don't. And so this is a simulation of what's called photoelectric effect. And in the photoelectric effect experiment, experiments, done in 1905, there's a piece of metal, light comes in and hits that metal. And if the light is of the appropriate frequency or wavelength, then electrons are emitted. The electrons coming off is called the photoelectric effect. And what they found was, was that no matter how bright of a red light was shown, that nothing ever happened with electrons coming up. So, if we take a whole bunch of red light waves coming in, it doesn't really matter, nothing happens. But then when we went to blue light, or if I could tell it might show up a little better, green light, when we did that, all of a sudden electrons would start to come up. And then we went to purple light. Electrons would come off and also be moving, generally speaking, a little bit faster. And so there's this kind of cutoff point where a certain color of light will cause electrons to be emitted and anything below that, doesn't matter how much light hits it, nothing will happen. So even if I had trillions of red light waves hitting this, nothing would happen. So this is a fundamental experiment, and the conclusions drawn from that, I'm not necessarily comfortable with it. So the conclusion drawn from that is that light is a particle. And there's some others about different types of light interact with matter differently, uh, in the sense that some types of light can cause a change to occur while others can't. Uh, but generally speaking, I don't agree with the fact that light is a particle. I think that when we look at the origins of light, that the best information we currently have is that light originates when you have some kind of charged particle, either an electron or a proton, or some other charged particle, I guess, and that there's an electric field emanating from that particle. And we kind of draw a static lines, but really it's transitioning away from that continually. And that when we shake that particle, when there's an acceleration of a charged particle, that is the origin of light, where the shaking of that creates a, diff a disturbance in that electric field, and that disturbance then uh, propagates out. And so there's an oscillation in the electric field value, and that's what light is. So light is the electric field variancy that propagates away from a charged particle when a charged particle is accelerated. And that electric field is accompanied by a magnetic field because a changing electric field inspires a changing magnetic field. And so there's kind of this propagation of this, you can probably see in a picture kind of like this. This is a little misleading because it's not a field moving up and down, it's the field actually changing its strength at different points. So this is, this is my model of how light works, is that you have a charged particle and you shake it. So when I have a charged particle here and I shake it, I produce some color of light that comes in and hits this thing. If I shake that particle harder, I get a different type of light. So I get green light now, and if I shake it even harder than that, I get violet light. So the harder I shake this, the more capable I am of kicking out electrons, and then additionally, the harder I shake this, the more force I can kick that electron out with. So it makes perfect sense to me that violet light is capable of removing a light. So why then do we say that the final conclusion of this is that light is a particle? Well, the assumption is, or the key idea that, that many people conclude is that light waves are singular. 
meaning this. Even if I have a whole bunch of electrons up here that I'm shaking, each electron only produces one light wave, and that light wave cannot combine in totality with other light waves. And so because the light waves are singular, we then treat them as particles. And I'm not comfortable with that jump. So I'm not comfortable with the fact that from here to here. I am very comfortable that an individual red light wave, which a lot of people call a photon, but I would not, an individual red light wave acts on its own and it can't take another red light wave and combine with it. If you think about how this originates, the red light wave is coming from a specific electron. There's no way for a second electron to produce a light wave with that so that the two are traveling in the same path at the same time. It's not physically possible. And so it makes perfect sense to me that two right red light waves that are near each other are not able to interact with the same electron, causing it to kind of have an additive property. So if there's a certain amount of energy from the red light wave, 10 red light waves don't have 10 times as much energy. Rather, you still have 10 individual things that then combine, that, that, that don't combine their energies, but have their own individual properties, unable to interact with other things. My problem is that the assumption that just because they're singular means that they're particles is not a fair assumption. If we look at an ocean wave, uh, we would not say that that's a particle because it's a single ocean wave. And likewise, I'm not sure that we should take this leap on light waves being particles. So I'm familiar that there are a lot of other experiments beyond this, but throughout my readings and understandings of them, never have I reached a point where this to here is, is, the, is, is there anything else besides this to this that creates the need for light to be treated as a particle? So I've read QED by Richard Feynman, and in that he states that his understanding is that light is definitely a particle and not a wave. And I don't understand how he can come up with that. I understand that his work you know, involved the assumption that light would be a particle. And I, I get that you can assume light is a particle and there's use for that but I don't, I don't believe that light is a particle and I have never seen any convincing evidence that light is a particle. All I've seen is that light waves can't combine in a useful manner. I know there's constructive and destructive interference, and so we see some, some interference between the electric field changes that are going on but there's not a way that the light waves can combine and then interact with a single particle like an electron um, in, in a manner by which we would characterize them as a particle. And so while I've seen some of the things that we do with light in terms of treating it as a, as a particle, I'm aware of the fact that you can have particles originate. be created out of nothing due to the uncertainty principle. So I'm familiar with kind of how the strong force works in a nucleus and how there's a particle created and that particle travels over to the nearest nucleon uh, before it runs out of time and that, that conservation of energy kind of breaks down or unbreaks down. But I'm not convinced that we need to necessarily translate that over to light just because that works for actual particles. Uh, just in the same way that kind of we had this graviton where people assume there's a gravity particle just because there's these, these three other particles that accompany forces, I'm not convinced that a graviton is necessary just because that's fit so far. There should be some kind of evidence at this point to back that up, and instead we have these theoretical speculations. So I think that the wave-particle duality in terms of light should be treated as differently from other particles. So if you want to convince me that an electron is a wave and not a particle, I would be open to that more so than this. I think that in, you can construct better evidence that an electron is actually just a wave. And so really, at the end of the day, my question kind of sums up to, what exactly do we mean by what a particle is? Is a particle just a, any singular discrete object? And so are all waves particles in the sense that there can be just one of them? Or are the restrictions on particles beyond this that, that I'm not aware of in our definition of what a particle is? Because to me, this is inconclusive evidence that light is a particle. This to me says I could treat light as a particle and maybe get some usage out of that, but really I would not be adequately describing what's really happening in real life 
And I think that we take this particle definition of light way too far away from our understandings of how light originates. And we really lose a lot of educational value in the process of doing that by, by kind of skipping over the scientific evidence and, and using a faulty conclusion jump in the process. So that's what I know. Uh, I'm sure that there's lots of errors in there because I'm not a physicist, but that's my current understanding of light particle duality and all the issues that I have with it up to this point. So if you see something wrong, please let me know. Uh, I would love to see some evidence to kind of make that make a little bit better sense in my head.